Hi, Phil Schoenberg, Fast Pitch Power. Uh, today, I'm going to address a concern that I hear fairly often. Uh, pitchers who are trying to develop and understand the concept of forearm fire, and we've spent a lot of time on it, and I'm going to spend more time on it because it's that important. Developing forearm fire, in my opinion, is crucial to maintaining and developing the greatest command and power of your pitches. We're just going to be dealing with a fastball today, uh, but I recently worked with a pitcher whose family came from out of state and spent a lot of time working on developing this, going from, you know, hello elbow to what we call forearm fire, which is a method of delivering the ball that, in our opinion and in our experience, gives you the most velocity and the most command. The problem that this particular pitcher is having has to do with inconsistency. I've been informed that sometimes it leaves my hand like effortlessly, and I got a lot of power, a lot of spin, feel like my hand's behind the ball, getting a lot of snap. Sometimes I just feel like the timing is off and the velocity is way down. This is not abnormal. There are a lot of things that can go wrong in the delivery of the pitch, especially when we're not doing strictly an isolation drill where I'm just standing here, palm up, firing palm down. And again, I want to point out, very, very important, my hand comes down the back side of the circle in a palm up position, not over rotated, but a palm up position, and the extension and pronation happens naturally as part of forearm fire. If you think of your arm as a whip with your shoulder and your upper arm being the handle, your forearm being the whip, and your wrist and your fingers and your hand being the tip of that whip, all of these things have to operate in sequence in order for that maximum velocity and the feeling of the pitch to be consistent. So let's look at a couple of the things that can happen when I'm doing an arm circle, and I'm doing it very slowly here, and I want to come down the back of that circle, palm up, and I want to get to the back of the throw zone, elbow first, with forearm lag. We've talked about this. This is where the whipping action takes place. My elbow comes to the back of the throw zone first. You'll notice my palm is still up. From here, I extend, I fire down the throw zone, I relax and my wrist, my hand pronates all by itself. I don't force it into that position from my shoulder. Well, one of the things that happens when you start becoming explosive off the pitching rubber and you're doing a full arm circle is that at some point down toward the back of the circle, your hand, and it's just a matter of feeling it and doing repetitions over and over again, you're going to turn down. When it turns down like this, and I come through the throw zone, and your coach is watching, or you're watching, or you're taking video, and you look at yourself, and you finish palm down, and you go, oh, I, uh, what happened? I did it all right. But you didn't do it all right. When you come down the back side of the circle, and your hand turns down, you lose a tremendous amount of snapping range here. When my palm is up coming down the back side of the circle, I have all of this snapping range. When it's here, I do not. That's very important in adding speed to your pitch and keeping your hand behind the ball. When I come down the back side of the circle with my palm up, if my hand turns over, my hand is now going to race ahead of my elbow. Now instead of my elbow coming to the back of the circle first with that forearm leg, I'm pushing the ball. Almost like a modified flip chain. If I was doing a flip change up and coming down the back side of the circle, we'll talk about change up soon, uh, in another post, but when I come down the back side of the circle and I'm going to do a flip change right here, I'm going to turn my hand, I'm going to run it down the throw zone, and I'm going to flick at the front side. And that ball is going to be 10 to 15 miles an hour slower than my fastball, even though my body's moving at the same speed. So that's one of the things that can happen. Coming down the back side of the circle, you turn. What can create that? Well, a number of things can create that. As you start coming down the back side of the circle, if you have pronated, or if you have everted your foot, we talked about this last time, and you're dragging your dry foot through, 
creating a lean and a bend, you can create premature rotation in your shoulders. When that happens, instead of being able to create that forearm lag, elbow first, forearm last, drive through, I am going to put my hand in this position, and again, if my elbow comes down first now, I'm not going to be in any position to deliver that ball to home plate. So what ha happens here is I come around the outside of the ball and I put some kind of funky spin on it. It could be, you know, a curved drop spin. In some cases, if I keep my, if I really focus on keeping my elbow in, it's going to be a screwball spin. I'll let the ball go this way. And I will lose that really dynamic fire and snap that I need to command that strike zone. If you take a video of your young pitcher and you slow it down, coming down the back side of that circle, she strides, toe and knee forward, good, power K position, vertically stacked, elbow first, here it is, my elbow is here, my hand is still behind, my palm is still up, extension, pronation, fire and drive, nice and relaxed, and you're going to see really, really good results. Let me know how it's going for you guys on this. Anybody who is struggling with this, we are happy to try to help you. As always, it's great talking to you. I'll speak to you next time.